Hi there, Robin here from Expert On. Today it's going to be uh, Q&A. We're going to do a whole bunch of Q&As and uh, we're going to start right off the hop. Just to give you an idea, we're going to do a bunch of mixers. Uh, we're going to talk about some speakers. We're going to talk about wattage and what I really think about wattage and DB because uh, that's real important. I'm also looking over at my iPad seeing some of the other questions that we're going to be talking about today. And uh, yeah, there's lots. There's lots of mixers. Specifically, it seems to be a lot of mixer questions. A couple of speaker questions. And uh, yeah, but we've got tons of questions having to do a lot with mixers. So we'll get right to it and we'll start with the first one, which is why I set this up here first. So you didn't have to wait for me to set this up. It is from a Nightwind. Nightwind's having problems recording. Now, this seems to be a big thing with a lot of people when it comes to these mixers. And these mixers are actually from Pile. Now, there are other companies uh, in the Consumer Pro Audio which offer record built right in via an MP3 player with an MP3 record function as an add-on. Uh, there is a problem. You can't actually hear the record when you're playing it live, so uh, it kind of you know defeats the purpose of having it there. But once you know how to use it and how to set it up, no problem after that. Now, uh, Pile has it on at least almost a dozen models now. Uh, it's a straight up add-on. When they added Bluetooth, they added record. Uh, it seemed to be like icing on the cake. Hey, let's do this. Now, I did some practicing with it. Uh, I've had the uh, privilege of having some customers that have purchased this for recording and come back and we worked on it a little bit, but I did give myself a little refresher just before the video. Now, to record on this machine, the recording part's pretty straightforward. You put yourself a USB stick in on the top, you choose the mode until it says REC record, uh, but you got to set up the gains. Now, there's a couple of things you got to do on your microphone. First, you have to make a choice. Uh, I like to have a lively mic. So I tend to have my red knob, which is my gain control at the very top, set to three quarters. That's just my choice. Now, at this point, I do want to hear myself over the speaker. Uh, so uh, I make sure the speaker's only on at 25%. I don't want to have the speaker on too loud, just loud enough so I can hear it and hear how I am, how I'm doing dynamically against the microphone. So the level I've set at 50%. Now, the reason why I set that at 50% is because after doing some tests, I've realized that the level controls of the actual mixer reflect against the actual main line, which is here, and that is going to be what's getting recorded up on the actual unit. So, uh, what level worked out best for me? Uh, in this case, yes, because I, I might want it to be at this comfort level on the microphone to have some actual play with the microphone, uh, I'm at 12 o'clock on my actual level. Then I'm at Unity here over on the mixer. Now, if I hit record by hitting the play button, I'm gonna be able to record. So once again, a good way to practice at home is to call out what you just did and do a little bit of variations on it so you can say, I like that better. So I can either turn up the gain a little bit so I can just call it out. Okay, I'm at 12 o'clock, so I'm gonna go, I'm at one o'clock, I'm at two o'clock, I'm at three o'clock, and then I'm gonna back up. So now I'm at two, one, noon, straight up 12, then I'm at 11, now I'm at 10 o'clock. And that's keeping Unity straight flat there. Uh, you can add some extra, you can say, I'm adding some extra bass into it, some lows, I'm adding some extra mids in, and now I'm taking them out. I'm gonna add in some highs, and always call out what you're doing. So I'm adding some highs to three quarters, now I'm backing out. Once you've done all of that, well, you just turn the mic off and turn it off. So to stop the recording, again, I'm gonna press the Play pause. Now it stopped. Really now it's going to go straight into the automatic play. A good way to practice at home is to call out what you just did and do a little bit of variations on it. So right away, once you actually so stop the record and press the mode, it's going to do this. It's going to go right into the actual playback of that. So I'm going to go. I'm at one o'clock. I'm at two o'clock. I'm at three o'clock, and then I'm going to back up. So now I'm at. So seeing that I'm not personally happy with what's going on here, I'm actually going to do it again, but this time I'm going to pull down the actual uh, main line out. I'm going to back this off a little bit. Now one other thing that I did do, and I don't know if this really has a big effect to it or not, is on the actual digital media player, I have turned around and I reduced it by holding down the minus button from 30 on the digital volume down to about 24. So we're going to press this button back. We're going to get it back to where it says record. And this time again, we're going to turn the mic on now. We're going to put the microphone back at 12 o'clock. We'll start there. Uh, we're going to get the recording started. And then I'm going to start counting it up. So I'm at minus 40 dB. 
Then I'm going to say I'm at minus 30 dB. Then I'm going to bring it up to minus 20 dB, minus 15 dB, and I think I'm going to stop there. But I'm going to back up a little bit again just to cover that. So minus 20 dB, and that's where I'm at here volume level wise. Now I'm going to go to minus 25 dB back up to there. I'm probably going to go up just up to 20 and then I'll be able to play back. Remember at the same time I've had this playing on this actual speaker the whole time. So not too loud, just want to have it on in the background a little bit so I don't get any feedback. So there you go. Hit the stop button and it automatically goes in the playback. Let's turn this guy up a little bit here. Let's turn this guy up and see how we did. Then I'm going to bring it up to minus 20 dB minus 15 dB, and I think I'm going to stop there. But I'm going to back up a little bit again just to cover that. So minus 20 dB, and that's where I'm at here volume level wise. Now I'm going to go to minus 25 dB, back up to there. I'm probably going to go up just up to 20, and then I'll be able to play back. Remember, at the same time, I've had this playing on this actual speaker the whole time. So not too loud, just want to have it on in the background a little bit so I don't get any feedback. So there you go. So there's how I set it up. Now, at the end of it, I've decided uh, that uh, I needed to have the playback coming up a little bit louder, but that was playback, not record. And I've decided that if I'm going to go forward and record, I'm probably going to be doing it at about minus 20 to minus 15 dB. It seems to work very well for my voice, and the playback seemed to be really good. So that's how you actually do it. Now, you do have to do these line checks depending on other equipment. If you've got other microphones, well, you kind of have a good base model for where you're going to have to have that microphone. If I have a second person singing, I'm going to set them up exactly the same way as I did the first one. Uh, and if they seem to be louder or quieter, I'll adjust the actual level higher or lower. Uh, do the same thing across the whole board. So there you go. That is how I figure out how to record with this actual unit. On to the next question. All right, so I have a question from Yusli, and it has to do on the video I did about the Blast Kings, the KXD2 15-inch A. Now, this is a great speaker. Uh, if you haven't uh, watched that video, go back and look for Blast King on my actual channel and watch that video. Uh, Blast King has made a line of product that really performs at a much higher level than everybody else. It costs a little bit more. It's in the same price point, let's say, as a JBL Eon 15 on sale right now at like $599. But I think in the States, Blast King's $499. But the power output of this speaker is about twice. And they don't cheat it. Uh, I always do sound checks using a dB meter and see how hard I have to push that speaker to get up to 90 to 100 dBs. And that speaker had no problem getting there. Now, it was a little on the heavy side at around 65 pounds because it is all wood, but it competes more with the $1,000 price point speakers out there, not with the five $600 price point speakers. So what his question is, <clears throat> he's got himself uh, a bunch of lightnings uh, from Altec Lansing, which is awesome. Um, and he's asking, you know, should he go on to keep buying Altec Lansings because he needs some more, or should he be looking at something else? Uh, and I'm assuming since he was looking, making this comment on the Blast King video, he was asking about, well, you know, against the Blast King. Uh, Blast King is, if we were to say pickup trucks, just to make it easy, it would be like going out and buying a Ford uh, F-250. Uh, it's up there in power. It's stronger. It'll tow more than everything else. It's, that's what it's built for. But it's a pickup truck, so it's got not a lot of features on it. Uh, the Altec Lansing uh, is like, instead of buying an F-150 pickup truck, which isn't, of course, as powerful as the 250, but it has all the bells and whistles on it because the Altec Lansing is more like the, well, suburban of pickup trucks. Uh, it's got all the features, all the bells. You can do all kinds of things. So if hooking it up and using wireless options and not having to have a mixer or controller is your thing, I think the Alltech Lansing Lightning is definitely the party speaker to go with. Uh, it's above and beyond everybody else right now for a party speaker. Uh, but if you're looking for straight up DJ power performance where you have all the other equipment, you might want to actually go with the Blast King. Uh, if that's a product that's available to you because you live in the States and you're in the southern states where that product is distributed, uh, you definitely want to go take a listen to it. Um, it's definitely louder than everything else you're going to see in its price category. Uh, I've taken it apart. I've looked inside. Build quality performance, speaker driver, the size of the magnet, everything that matters 
that keeps the speaker working in a long time uh, is in that product. So definitely worth having a look at. Again, I hope that helps out. Uh, it all comes down to, do you want convenience? Do you want a party speaker or do you want a performance speaker? There you go. Next question. So here we go, another mixer question. And this has to do with uh, Behringer mixer. So let's uh, swap out the mixers here. All right, so comment, uh, question, sorry, a question from uh, Content Deleted, which by the way, I looked at your actual uh, username. Very cool the way you did that, Content Deleted. That was very smart. Anyways, uh, your question has to do with, uh, could you use uh, an effects, an external effects board uh, like the uh, Roland VT3 with uh, this particular mixer I just put out here, which happens to be the Q502 USB. And, uh, you know, I look at it, and I, I'm going to tell you right now. It's pretty straightforward. You've got control room, you've got mean out, you've got effects send, you've got uh, stereo auxiliary return. For sure, for sure. It's going to be hooking up right on the top three, right across here. Uh, you can send out and you can uh, return in, so this way you can actually connect your equipment to it. Now, of course, once you do that, that is all going to be part of your red knobs, because that's the intent. I uh, look at this mixer in more depth, and this is specifically for that purpose, which is to actually get your effects right into the mixer using an external effects or maybe uh, something else. So there you go. All right, so we've got a new question. Now, this question is in reference to a video I just did lately. We've got a brand new product here, and it's crazy price in the States. It's a $50 mixer in the U.S. Unfortunately, I'm you know, it's $100 in Canada, but that's besides the point. It's because of the distribution, we won't talk about that. We will talk about the question, and the question has to do with recording, because this does have a recorder built into it, and the question, if I'm reading it properly, is can I use a microphone and play music and record at the same time? Now, you do make note about the computer. Now, first, I'll, we'll take care of the computer portion of it right away. Uh, for detail, this does not actually go to your computer. The sound card option isn't there uh, for an audio interface to the computer. So normally a lot of them do have audio interface capability, even give you a special cable to make that happen. You can now buy it. Uh, it's just standard USB to USB, but uh, uh, this one is not built that way. This one's built for recording. So if you do plan on recording on it, first you gotta follow the instructions that I started with at the beginning of this Q&A session. Uh, and you have to take your music and you have to bring your music in via line three and four. Now, if you bring your music in through there, uh, just use a quarter inch to 3.5 adapter kit and I'll get one of those to so show you. So this is the cable I'm referring to. So it's gonna have two quarter inch at the one end and a 3.5. So if you're going on Amazon, you're looking to buy this cable, that's what it is. Uh, we have it in our uh, affiliate store with Amazon in the States. So you can have a look there, we'll put a link down below. But that's the cable you wanna have. You wanna be able to plug that in here. Plug this into your tablet, your laptop, whatever it is that you want to play your music from and gain control it into that channel, which is channel three and four. So once you've done that, you can now put in the actual USB stick, choose record and record. Remember, follow all the instructions I had on the first part so you can adjust the gain levels, but that's how you can record on this if you want to have an end product that you can play around with on your computer. So there you go, $50 mixer. Awesome, by the way, 50 bucks. Absolutely great product. Okay, new question, and it has to do with inventory. So uh, unfortunately, Jonathan, you didn't tell me where you're actually uh, from, so I couldn't actually check on that for you. But uh, when it comes to Alto stock, this is about the TS-312. Uh, it goes for a lot of Alto products. They cannot produce their products fast enough to keep up with, uh, with demand. Uh, they're highly sought after. People really, really want to buy them. The price points are awesome and the power levels are great. You take care of the power and you don't blow it up. It's going to be a great speaker. They just sound really good. Now, if you're looking for an alternative, because you can't find it. Now, a lot of times you'll find it on Amazon. That's why we put a link down below. But if not, check with your local uh, guitar center or something like that. You might be able to pick them up there or order them in. Uh, Alto is owned by a company called In Music. Now, In Music's a parent company, and they also own a couple of other brands. Uh, one of them happens to be Headrush, and the other one happens to be Alesis. Now, uh, the DSP 
uh, sound emulators or audio emulators in them, whatever you want to call them. Slightly different, but very, very close. So if you're looking for a speaker that has uh, all the same power output capability, uh, maybe a little tighter on the punch at the bottom, a little sharper on the highs, there you go. That's the Elisis. Uh, if you want something that really pulls out a good, strong mid-range and a constant uh, level at the bottom end with a nice, smooth upper top, uh, that would be your head rush. Uh, it's just the DSP settings that are manufactured into the speaker to balance it out a little bit better. Yes, there are a little bit of differences on the knobs in the back because they're intended to be either being used as high Z or line inputs. So uh, you can look at those options. They're priced exactly the same. But then you'd have something a little different than everybody else. That would be cool. All right, new question. So it has to do with this mixer that I have on the table right now. Now, this is an Alto. Uh, to be exact, the ZMX122FX. So yes, it has FX. Uh, it's a great mixer. It's got a lot of features on it. Uh, it's very popular for a lot of people. If you're in a small band, that sort of thing. Lots of people like it. Uh, it doesn't have a USB output. Now the question is, how do I plug in? He's got an MXL990 microphone, which I checked is a condenser microphone, and that plugs in right up here. Turn on the phantom power you're all set. Now you do make mention you want to hook it up to your computer and you're just not 100% sure how and if you have to buy a special cable or a splitter or something like that. Uh, normally, no, if you're plugging this into your uh, monitor on your desk, then you use the uh, monitor output so you can hear that. You're going to need to take the main inputs. Now you do mention that you want to put on that computer, so uh, the cable that you appear to be talking about is this one right here. So I'm going to unwrap it. Now this cable here there's a lot of generic versions, uh, if this is the way you want to go. Uh, it's got a tiny built-in uh, analog digital sound card built into this little guy right here, so it's going to convert your analog signal into a digital signal for your computer. So this, you would plug into your main out, for example. You would come right here, you'd find your main out on the board, which I happen to have an RCA plug adapter plugged into it. I would go right here. And there you go. If I want to plug this speaker in, right next to these guys is a control room option. So I would take this speaker, get to the other end of this cable, and in this case I happen to have one that already has a quarter inch on it, and that would plug in to right here. Uh, there you go. That's done. So control room, if I want. Control room gives me knob control here. I can also plug it in at the very top, which is the monitor output. So if I look on the board here, I'll find that these top knobs are monitor outputs. So multiple ways of getting the signal out of the actual board, and that's how you do that. So off there or control room, and then it becomes part of the actual control room knob because this one actually has its own control room knob right here. There you go. So that's how you do that. Uh, if you're getting a new mixer, get one with the USB built in. If you're looking at getting a better cable connection or option there, look at an audio interface. Um, that'll give you more audio controls. This is going to be a two channel recording option. So your entire mixer is going to have to be controlled via the pan or balance options, depending on what inputs you're using. And that's going to determine what channel is going to end up with on your computer. So that's what's going on here. So I hope that helped, and I hope we covered that one. New question from Lin Jing King, if I'm pronouncing that right. Good for me. If I'm not, I do apologize. Uh, he's got a couple of Alto TX, sorry, TX210s, and he wants to add a subwoofer to it. And you're making reference to, like, the TS315. Uh, uh, that would be a really good option if you want to put some subs to that. That's, that's perfect. Uh, the part that concerns me a little bit is in the... In your question, you talk about doing mobile gigs for 50 to 100 people. Um, that speaker is only about 150 watts. It could only generate maybe about, at best, 70 dB. Uh, I'm concerned that you can't fill the room with two tents. They'll sound really good in a studio, uh, in a garage band environment, rec room, that sort of thing, even pretty good in a backyard. But um, I always say about the TX series is they're great speakers when you're not getting paid to do the job because you're not going to get the volume uh, that a, a DJ that's getting paid to do the job is expected to get to. Uh, you want to be able to run between 80 and 100 dBs depending on the size of room you're in 
and the type of music you're going to play. So that's my bigger concern. Subwoofer, easy, no problem. Uh, it'll actually help you get more volume out of the top because you'll be able to run uh, in the back, select the uh, TS, I would go with the TS310 option. Uh, it'll, it'll definitely take off enough of the bass off the top so you can get a little more gain out of your tops. But I, I don't think you're going to be able to get to 100 people with that. Um, 50 people in a room tops, not a big room, just a small hall type of thing or a bar. Uh, but you're really going to put a lot of stress in those speakers. So there you go. I hope that helped. And if you are looking for better speakers than that as an option, uh, the 12-inch, the TS312s from Alto probably be a better bang for the buck power or ratio wise. All right, I've got a question from uh, NX Studio. And this is on reference to a video I did where I was showing how to hook up two mixers together. Uh, the premise of the video was I, you know, a lot of churches, uh, a lot of small halls, uh, gathering centers, or maybe just, you know, a bunch of guys getting together and together they have two mixers and they have enough channels, but you know, you don't necessarily have to go out and spend four or five, six hundred dollars to just buy one bigger mixer. So uh, to save money, you can just link them together. So that's that video is all about and showing you how to do all those things. Uh, he wants to know, so can I do another mixer as a monitor? Kind of gives me the impression because I'm missing one piece of information there. Is that second, is that the idea is that monitor has a built in mixer on top of it and you want to use that? If you can, I would treat it as a monitor. Just take the first line out on it and plug it in as a monitor off of your actual first mixer. Uh, just plug in the first channel and use that to run the whole thing. Because um, outside of that, if I'm missing the context, you might want to ask the question again, but just add a little more context to the question. Uh, but using cables that allow you to uh, insert uh, is not proper. You don't want to send it out and back into a mixing board. Uh, you actually want to use one of the uh, either monitor outputs or control room outputs, depending on the mixer you have. So I hope that helped. Let me know if I missed the question. Just rephrase it and add some more context and I'll get back to it. All right, uh, new question. This question is from uh, Leonard. Leonard has a question about, uh, well, more of a comment, uh, his subwoofer. He's basically saying his subwoofer uh, basically tops out when he only puts it uh, maybe at uh, two, maybe three. Uh, it's very annoying because he's constantly having to turn down the bass uh, because it doesn't, it's not getting him where he needs to go. And he's got, I, I'm, maybe he does, maybe he doesn't. He might be, he's using the, Eon 618S as a point of reference. Now, that's real important that you watch, if you're using a controller or a mixer, you're gonna to wanna to watch a video that I did where it was how not to blow up your speakers. Uh, it's basically to use the dynamic levels either on your mixer or on your controller to maximize the output performance. Uh, if you're uh, pushing it here, where you're not getting up any actual dynamic level on your meters, uh, that means your input levels are probably kind of high, either on your speaker, uh, they could be accidentally turned on to the mic input, which would overmodulate everything, and that would definitely be getting your subwoofer way too excited, and then making a lot of noise and being distorted. So have a look, watch that video. That video really talks about how to control your dynamic levels using all your gain controls and the controls on your uh, controller itself. So the idea is you don't want to be overmodulated, so this way you can't see or hear what's going on. Uh, it also depends how many subs do you have against how many tops. If you've got two tops and one subwoofer, that one sub in a large room is going to be working really hard to keep up with those two tops. Anyways, let me know how that goes. You can certainly comment back and uh, we'll see how we're doing on that, that problem there. But you shouldn't have that problem because like I said in uh, reply to your question, um, our subs here, we run at 75%, no problem because I do make sure that everything's lined up and I'm not over modulating. All right, new comment from DJ Technovibe. Now, uh, he's really going on an entire paragraph and about a wattage RMS versus peak and all kinds of stuff. And he seems to be very frustrated and puts it out there and I, I get it. Um, 
there's a horrible number race on the internet when it comes to wattage and how loud people were willing to put, or sorry, how high of a number they're willing to put on their box uh, to sell it and how much they're willing to put on the internet. Now, um, amazingly enough, they all pretty much range close uh, in their price points. So if you're looking at uh, uh, models like the ZLX, uh, JBL's Eon, uh, series or uh, Mackie Thump, the new series. Uh, the only one that comes up a little bit higher that we test on a regular basis is Alto. Uh, but they're the new guy on the block when it comes to model series. It's like coming out with new phones. They came out with a bigger, more powerful model. And I think eventually everybody's going to start reflecting that. Um, but they, they all double rate. I mean, Alto is quite obvious. Even the speaker I have here says 300 watts. They're not shy to tell you that it's only 150. But uh, in the consumer world, wattage is about the only way we can really rate anything. Uh, so that's why there's a big numbers race on it. Uh, you get to a point where you're at a PRX, if you're spending over $1,000 on your individual speaker, you're not the customer who's going to ask about wattage anyways. You don't care anymore. You care about the real output in dB. What's the decibel level? Because you need to run at a certain level and you need to maintain that. You're in a much bigger venue. You need to be able to fill that venue with sound. Um, the reason why I say it that way is because travel around the world today, any big concerts, any big shows, any big uh, events, uh, I call them the DB police. That's what everybody, you know, it's a sound police. And these are people that come out and they specifically come out to big events and they come out with their meters and they do sound tests. They do sound checks all around and uh, they give you a certificate saying that you passed and that you're okay to go on with your show because they do not want you to be over 100 dB. Uh, Some place in Europe it's 99, which is a bizarre number, but uh, here it's mostly, they don't want to exceed 100 dB. Uh, and it's because they don't want people to get hurt, which is why they all use line arrays now. It's all about having more speakers at a medium volume level to fill a large space than to have just a few speakers that are extremely large, extremely powerful, and overwhelming the people right in front of it, but just to get the noise across the room. So uh, dB level is definitely what you're looking for. If you're a DJ, uh, you're definitely trying to, you know, entertain people between 70 dB and 90, 95 dB, and that tends to be the sweet spot. Uh, dB just really is how loud it's going to feel in the space you're in. So there you go. That's my two cents to uh, DJ Techno Vibes uh, point. So, yes, it is frustrating because you don't know what it really means. Uh, and it's very hard to follow the bouncing ball that way uh, because you don't know when you're going to get something good or not. Anyways, that's why you watch reviews. On from there. Question from Comp. It's a pretty straightforward question. Uh, it, the question is stated on the Mackie Pro FX 16 V2, or Pro FX 16 V2. And he's asking, this versus the Alto Live 16. You know what, they're both, it's like Coke and Pepsi. You decide which one's Coke, which one's Pepsi. But it comes down a lot of times not to the price, not to the brand, but to the features on the mixer. So uh, Alto's mixers have a lot of compressors on them, so you can adjust it. And that's really good because you're going to have like, I think, four compressors on that one. So if you like controlling that, that's a good thing. Uh, if you like to have that stuff done automatically for you because you don't want to bother with it uh, and you just want to have an overall good mixer uh, performance wise, well, then you can go for the Mackie. Uh, it tends to do a little bit better at uh, automating the process. Um, Though at the same time, I think I like having the actual control of the compressor because that means it's a separate function from the effects processor, where in the Mackie, the, um, the, the, the compression system and the effects are built into the same onboard computer. So sometimes it, I, it appears to me, and that's just my opinion, that uh, the Mackie uh, lacks. The, the, the more you ask the compressor to work, uh, the little bit it takes away from the effects. But it, unfortunately, I think, tends to try and prioritize the effects first. And then we tend to lose, a, you know, definitely on the compression side. If you like using compressors and you'd like to have that feature, that's why the, uh, the Alto costs a little bit more. Compressors are expensive. On average, $35 to $50 per compression knob you see on a unit. 
new question. So we were lucky enough to do a review on the U3 wireless system. Uh, we have a video on that, the U3. And uh, it's a wireless XLR, uh, originally built just straight up, you know, for most people who were for microphone applications. So how do, do I turn my corded mic into a cordless mic? Well, you buy a U3 and you get only a 50 millisecond delay through a uh, 2.4 gigahertz system. It's a multi-channel system. I think it has six channels on it. it. might have eight. I could be wrong there. But the question is, can you use that with multiple, in this case, receivers? And yes, you can. And if I'm not mistaken, they sell those receivers separately now. So you can transmit from one point to a bunch because a lot of people, me included, use it uh, as a uh, wireless transmitting system for speakers. So I would use an XLR or a quarter inch XLR adapter out of a controller mixer to a remote speaker, uh, not have to worry about running that you know, 50, 60 foot cable. It's not that I don't wanna run the cable. Yes, I would prefer to run the cable, but a lot of times you gotta get past doorways and all kinds of stuff. And it's just an inconvenience to even make it happen so you tend to have the speaker right up next to you. So in this case, it's wireless. All you need is power for the speaker, plug that into the back and you're all set. Your show's gonna go off really well and you're gonna have the speaker just where you want it. So you can buy extra actual receivers so you just have to have one transmitter. So that's a, that's a can do. Total little comment from Melvin and uh, it's also on the X5 and he just bought one. He's just letting me know and he's gonna be doing a review on it shortly. So Melvin, when you actually do that review, uh, let me know you've done the review and I'll go check out your channel and have a look at it now. Um, good part about reviews is the more reviews there are for products, especially like if, if I get you interested in a product and you buy it and you do a review on it, uh, it helps everybody because it basically widens the pool of people's opinions and how people talk about stuff. So there you go. All right, so I guess that's gonna be it actually for questions this week. If you have any questions or comments that you'd like to ask, certainly ask them and I will get to them and try and uh, do a video on it uh, next week and see where we're at. So, but for now, uh, you're certainly welcome to comment on this one. If you've subscribed, I always wanna say thank you. Uh, if you've asked a question I've answered, I appreciate the questions and give me the chance to uh, help everybody out with that answer. And uh, we'll see you on the next video. So bye for now.